Okay, the uh, talk that I'm going to give today is uh, on the use of antibiotics in the ICU. This is going to be dominantly directed at the principles behind the use, not at any specific antibiotic or any specific infection in the ICU. So if you really realize it, it is extremely common for people to develop an infection in the ICU or come to the ICU with an infection. So to approximately say roughly half the number of patients in the ICU are probably infected or will develop an infection at some time or the other. And these infections obviously can be of varying types, but there is a dominance of respiratory and bacteremic uh, infections that you will see in the intensive care patient. Uh, when we use antibiotics under these circumstances, there are certain very basic rules that we need to apply in the use of these antibiotics. We give antibiotics in patients with at various stages of in, in infection or even at stages where we would suspect the development of infection. When we anticipate an infection, we can administer a prophylactic antibiotic even before the infection has developed. Very often in the ICU, we typically would use antibiotics in patients with clinically suspected infections who have not yet had a proof by bacteriological confirmation of the existence of the infection. And this is what we would constitute an empirical therapy. And the third situation is when we have a bacteriological confirmation and the patient is identified to have a specific infection and we would treat them definitively. With these three major circumstances, we need to develop basic rules about the use of antibiotics in each of these situations. The situation in which prophylaxis has probably been well studied is in the situation related to infections in surgery. And here, we know the rules. Long ago, in 1960s, we developed rules related to the use of prophylactic antibiotics, where the existence of a reasonable concentration of antibiotic at the time of incision would be the most effective way of preventing an infection. A single dose given one hour before incision is very typical of what is usually recommended. And this is only for what we call as clean contaminated surgery, surgery with a reasonable risk of developing infection. The same principle is usually extrapolated, but before we extrapolate it, I want to make one very specific point. While it is very typical for us to say one dose, it is very common in the uh, surgical setting to prolong the use of antibiotics beyond that, usually for 24 to 48 hours beyond the initial period after the surgery. Now, while this...